Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another video. So this video is not going to be like our normal videos because it's not going to have a lot of the fancy editing and stuff that you're used to, but this allows us to get information to you guys much quicker. So that's why we're going to try this new format. Tell us what you think about it, but for now, let's get right into it. So Plexure is a video that we did a few months ago based on our own research. But recently, just before Christmas or around Christmas, there was a detailed research report done by a financial institution named Ord Minet. Um, so in this video, we're going to be going over their report and giving you our thoughts on their predictions of Plexure. So a little bit of background on this financial institution. Um, currently, they have $35 billion in funds under advice. And also, the company was founded in 1950s, so uh, has a long-standing history. Okay. But let's jump straight to the report. For those of you who don't know, Plexure is a leading global provider of customer engagement and personalization software tailored to retail and grocery enterprises seeking to interact with customers and influence their behavior more effectively. But we're not going to go over what Plexure does in this video, but if you do want to understand what Plexure does in more depth, you can just refer to our video that we did a few months ago. That will give you all you need. So as you can see, Old Minute has a recommendation buy. It's at a target price of $1.36 in Australian dollars, which if we convert it into New Zealand dollars comes out as $1.49, which is roughly 30 cents higher than the current market price. But being said that they do put it as higher risk. So if we look at the financial summary, they have actually provided a forecast up to FY23. For FY21, they forecast the revenue to be 29 million, FY22 to be 38 million, and FY23 to be 53 million. So for FY21, 29 million dollars actually makes sense because that is the guidance lecture has given. So for FY22 and FY23, these numbers are just based on their own forecast. And if we do the math, it's around 35% increase every year in revenue. If we jump down to EBITDA, they forecast the next three years to be negative, which means they're predicting the company to be loss making. Which makes sense for a growing company as it's a common trait for most growing companies in the industry. And as you can see, even down here, that they've predicted the headcount to be growing. Now that we've looked at their forecast, let's dig a little deeper into why they've made these forecasts. So we've gone through this report and noted down some key points as to why this institution has made these forecasts. So beginning with this sentence here, the Super Endo contract has opened up an important grocery channel and in particular provides a platform for growth within the broader a hold delays group. Yeah, not too sure how to say it. So what does the sentence mean? This sentence is referring to their recent customer, Superindo. Superindo is a grocery chain in Indonesia, with their parent company being a whole delays. So this company here is a world leading food retailer based in the Netherlands with 6,500 stores across 11 markets that generate 66.3 billion euros. So you can imagine why this financial institution thinks that this is one of the key points as to why they will grow. Because if Super Indo works out right for Plexure, the parent company could potentially give a contract to Plexure to make apps for all other countries that the company is operating in. So the likelihood that the parent company will give Plexure the opportunity to develop apps for all the markets that they operate in may come true in the foreseeable future because the Super Indo stats speak for themselves. And if we take a look at a few of the key stats, 55% increase in basket size for app members versus non-app members, 107% of annual user adoption target reached just in three months. So with stats like that, even this financial institution believes a successful rollout of Plexure and Super Endo has the potential to expand the solution into parent company meaning that the parent company is likely to give a contract to develop apps in all of their markets. Moving to our next point, so the report states, we see potential upside to gross profit margin as Plexure builds in a transactional component to existing and new customer contracts. So by transactional component, what we think they are referring to here is Japan McDonald's app, which is the only McDonald's app currently that allows you to order and pay. So because this feature is only available in Japan currently, there is still a lot of room for expansion of this feature into other countries, which in turn will protect potentially generate greater recurring revenues. Further to add to this point, the report estimates 42% of their FY20 revenue came from just McDonald's Japan, which really shows how significant this might be if McDonald's were to expand this feature to other countries. Moving forward, this report does research on the whole industry itself and provides supporting evidence. It suggests that the mobile engagement industry was worth US $4.4 billion in 2017, and is forecasted to increase to a US $38.7 billion market by 2023, which is a compounded annual growth rate of 43.5%, as well as the loyalty management platforms growing at a compounded annual rate of 20.1%, which would explain why the report's forecasts for FY22 and FY23 were massive increases in revenue. 
But having said this, if we take a look at the competitor list that the report provides, we can see that even though that might turn out to be a massive industry, there are a lot of players out there that are trying to compete for market share, which is something which we think makes Plexure a risky buy, which the report agrees with too, because it places Plexure as a high risk buy. So the last thing we want to look at before we give our full opinion is the peer analysis. This analysis compares Plexure to similar global companies in the industry and also against specifically Australian software companies. It compares it based on enterprise value to sales multiple. Essentially, when looking at this multiple, you want a low number relative to its competition. This report claims that Plexure is at a modest discount, so let's see. If we look at the average forward multiple for both global and Australian specific companies, we can see that Plexure has lower multiple to its comparison. However, average can be heavily skewed by a single company, so it's better to look at the median, which suggests Plexure is neither over or undervalued compared to its peers on both comparison globally and Australia specific. So we believe that the points we mentioned were the main contributing factors to why the report suggested the revenue of 53 million for FY 2023. Let's quickly recap the points we went over. Plexure having the potential to rapidly grow in the grocery sector through Superindo's parent company which generates $80 billion in revenue annually. McDonald's order and pay expanding into other countries after a successful run in Japan. The mobile engagement industry going up at an annual compounded rate of 43.5%. And given Plexure's competition, Plexure still being at a modest discount. Now, the question being, do we agree with this report and its forecasts? Although the channels the report mentions through which Plexure will capture its growth, we agree with. However, the revenue captured from these channels seems to be a bit on the optimistic side. If we look back at White Castle and Super Inda, they both signed their contract with Plexure in FY20. But despite these two new customers, Plexure's FY21 revenue guidance is only 29 million, which is only 15% growth. So by saying that FY22 revenue will be 38.5 million, which is a 32% increase, seems a bit far-fetched. Also, the report is basing this revenue on the assumption that Plexure will get a new customer every three months continuing forward. And even if COVID decides not to play a vector, a customer every three months is still a tall feat. But every outcome is still a possibility because nobody knows the future. So if their assumptions are right and Plexure does manage to bag a customer every three months or even bag one big fish from time to time, their valuations of Plexure could be on par. If you want more details and a full analysis on Plexure, make sure to check out our Plexure video that we did a few months ago. This was our first attempt at this kind of structure. Hopefully it didn't turn out too bad. Let us know if you liked this by giving us a thumbs up. We'll see you next time.